What's going on, guys? Welcome to the PN Wild Vlogcast, episode one. Today we got on uh, Tony from Dark Timber Coffee Company. Hello, hello. And joined with Zach from PN Wild as well. Hello. So today we're going to dive into kind of do a debrief with Tony about his 2017 um, over the counter Washington mule deer. If you guys haven't seen it, it's a it's stud. A, it's an absolute whopper. And uh, tell us about that thing, man. <laughs> yeah, so it was a pretty blessed season um, this year started up a little bit slow i uh, started it off doing the washington high hunt uh, for those of you that don't know what that is in washington there's a september high hunt um, where you can rifle hunt for mule deer and bench leg blacktails in september uh, so started off my season doing that uh, was really crowded this year uh, due to all the wildfires here yeah, the fires were bad, so yeah, it had smoke, to, yeah. just visibility. Push, every, push sure. everyone together. Yeah, it was funny, you know, we're looking at the spot on a map, and we're like, oh, this is a pretty good spot. It's like really, you know, it took us a long time to get up in there. And when we got in there, there's probably 50 guys up there because uh, it was one of the only wilderness areas that was open yeah. during that time. Due to the fires and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so they shut down uh, a lot of the sort of the more popular areas, so guys were... You know, they had, you know, taken time off from work, you know, months mm. in advance, and they were going to do this come hell or high water. You know? Yeah. Were you so, guys seeing bucks and stuff, Joe? Uh, we we saw some deer. Yeah. Right? So they weren't out typically like they normally are. Right? And with the long season ahead, you probably didn't want to take some. Yeah, it would have bucks. to have been big, yeah. you know, up there. And you're definitely not going to shoot a, a two-year-old yeah. buck up yeah. in there. Yeah. You know, a few guys did while we were up there. Of course. Yeah, yeah. right below my tent, actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually how yeah. it works out. Yeah. yeah but Nothing I'm, quite like working that hard to get up into a pumpkin patch. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was amazing. You know, I had high hopes, and I got up there, and it took me like, you know, 3,000 feet of elevation to get up there. And uh, I get up to the top, and I get up and over the ridge, and I just looked, and I was just like, orange, orange, oh. orange. And I was just like, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. yeah. How was the weather in September? Was it good? Hot. Yeah. Yeah, it was hot, and, and uh, it was a hot summer. So there was real. There was really no water up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so there was there was one basin uh, that still had a good amount of water, and that's where the bucks were. Mm -hmm. And I and I and I really felt sorry for these deer because these deer were surrounded by hunters. Oh, I bet. I mean, they'd come out in the morning and and. Uh, you know, there's just there's just guys everywhere. You know, the morning that we left, it was like World War Three going off on these group of bucks. You know, yeah, it was just guys shooting from 800 yards over this way and from over on this knob. So, yeah, it was, it was pretty unreal up there this year. So that was like my kickoff to uh, deer season. To deer season. Uh, didn't really get to hunt elk much this year. Uh, did some muzzleloader hunting at our cabin, uh, but just had a few days to do that. But yeah. So we rolled out a muzzleloader elk season and right into, you know, general rifle deer season. And uh, one of That's my... That's when you, you went over with Rob Ensley, right? Yeah. So, was, yeah. A friend of mine, Rob Ensley, uh, we had been talking and we were like, oh, we're going to go over and do a hunt together. Uh, so we rolled over to the eastern central side of Washington uh, and did a deer hunt for a few days. And, uh, it was a pretty good hunt. Uh, I had a little bit of, a little bit of pretty uh, good. Yeah, yeah. This, this, Rob also took a giant. Yeah. For you yeah. don't know. Yeah, we'll put it, was, it was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> so he got he got a good buck. Yeah. So we were um, we were seeing deer um, daily in there, and he had spotted a nice four by four buck. Yeah, I think he went 24 inches wide. Dang. Like that. That's nice. So, yeah, he's, he's a good buck. So he, he had spotted him from, we were on one knob, and he had spotted him, like, I mean, clear across to the next mountain. And I, I don't know how he saw him with regular binoculars and without a spotting tool, but I have no idea. How he yeah. <laughs> and he, you know, middle of the day, went over there, and they were on top of this big sort of basalt rock. Mm -hmm. Mountain basically is flat on top, and they're up there, and they're feeding around, and he spotted them, so he made a stock on them. Got up, took him a long time to get up there. Basically, rock climbed to get to the top of where these bucks were hanging. He got up there, and he was able to get a nice. I think he said sixty yard shot on it. That's awesome. Yeah, Dang. yeah. With a rifle. Yeah, with a rifle. <laughs> with a rifle, that's pretty good. That's a dream. Uh, 
some guys and, don't really have like, the patience yeah. to wait till 60 yards with a rifle. But. Right, yeah. So I think what he did is he, he kind of got to that and popped over the edge and that, that buck. Was oh, just, just right there. there. Yeah. yeah, so he didn't he didn't see this buck and get closer. It, yeah. was, it was, you know, His first stock just worked out perfect. Just, he popped yeah. up. Yeah. There he was, yeah. you know. So real nice buck. Uh, I heard the shot, but I didn't. I thought it was one other guy that we knew that was in that area. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So you weren't with him at the set. You didn't see the shot. We, or we split up. Gotcha. Yeah. So I'm hunting this one area, and we can get into that a little bit later. What would happen then? But uh, but I heard the shot, but I thought it was one other guy that was over here. He ended up not, that same day taking a really nice, nice four point, uh, really cool, unique buck. It's he was real tall, real tall buck, and it real narrow. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. He was mature. He just, yeah. This wasn't very wide, but he was real tall, real heavy, real cool looking buck. So, uh, congrats to him. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Him. But uh, but Rob, I had no idea. I heard, like I said, I heard the shot, but I didn't know it was him. And you know, all went quiet after that. And uh, you know, I get back up to base camp, and there's a note. And Rob shot a buck. And, you know, we're packing him out. Well, we had one other guy with us. And what he meant by that note was, I'm packing everything out. Rob's bringing the deer oh. down another road that we thought we could get in. You know, so mm. there's a whole road that we could get in there. Turns out we couldn't get up that road. So Rob actually, all that whole deer in his pack. I, mean, I don't know what his pack weight is. Wow. Like insane, <laughs> insane amount. Yeah. And he hiked that deer probably four miles out by himself. And, uh, hmm. And uh, at one point, <laughs> at one point, uh, there was a group of gals on horseback that had found him uh, rolling around in the dirt. <laughs> what? He had he had stopped to do something. I don't know. It was like tie his shoe or something. He didn't take his pack off, and his pack uh, flopped, oh, over. flopped gotcha. over. And then he couldn't get back on his feet, so he was like turtle rolling. <laughs> this is what he told me. He was like turtle rolling on the road, and then all of a sudden he hears like like uh footsteps from a horse uh -huh. coming up and it's two women on horseback just kind of looking just at him. Or something like that? yeah just looking at him as yeah. he's like trying to get onto his feet because his pack weighs so much he's gonna be super happy that you're telling us right I now know, right? <laughs> Rob, i'm sorry don't, don't awesome story one. rob I mean, yeah. that's what hunting's all about yeah. man i don't know if you wanted this one to get out there but it, it's out there i don't yeah. know how many people want to watch this but yeah. you know probably not that many yeah. Well, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah. Four people. And, oh, that's hey, four people. Four people. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so they're, you know, they come up and they're, they're looking at him rolling around like a turtle, and he finally gets to his feet, and uh, they had a laugh or whatever, and they they took off. But uh, we finally hooked up with him. It was dark, and some people had uh, come, you know, up the road. They they had access to this area that we were in. And, they had the, I think it was a quad with a little trailer on it, mm -hmm. and uh, they picked him up on the road and they were oh. able to get him get him back oh, out. Oh, nice! Yeah. I was actually I was suiting back up to go after him because you know I didn't know where he was and it yeah. was getting dark and you know I knew he had he had a buck on his back and you know I didn't know what happened and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know earlier that day I had run in with a cougar. Yeah. So I wasn't sure, you know. Cougars, and, I mean, on. that much weight on your back, you roll an ankle or something like yeah, that. Yeah, oh, exactly. You're stuck. You yeah. So, uh, so I was ready to you get back up and go get him. You know, I was talking myself into going back over that ridge again. Mm. You know, and, but we ended up getting a phone call, and he was back at somebody's camp, and we went over there and saw that dandy buck that he had, and that was pretty good. That's awesome. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So that day, he, you know, he got a nice buck. Earlier that morning, um, so the morning hunt, uh, on that day, uh, I was kind of on the bucks right away. Uh, sort of right at first light, I, I had a shot at a nice, a big, heavy three point, mature three point. You know, nothing wrong with those, man. Yeah, he kind of shot a nice one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was one of those deals where you know, it's just your rifles they're dialed in at three hundred yards. Mm -hmm. These bucks are popping up at fifty yards. You know what I mean? Straight downhill. And it's, yeah. You're just air mailing it right over their back, and you know you're not getting a second shot. So when I when I crept up and over these these rocks uh, on a cliff, you hunting some real nasty crazy. Yeah, it's cliffy, stuff. man. Yeah. Like these bucks are, you know, they're up in the cliffs. They're up in the. Kind of always found that that's what they like. Mm -hmm. It's like that nasty stuff. Yeah, they do that like 
a lot of times, you know, especially pre rut, you know, yeah. from what I've seen. Exactly, same here. Right. Like just nasty they're gonna stuff, sit up there. Up, they're gonna sit up in those rocks, and they're just they're just laying and wait. Mm-hmm. They're wait. They're gonna come down not at night, check the does. They're gonna do all that stuff. They're gonna go in, in the mornings. You know, they're gonna go right back to those rocks. So they're usually bedded up in those rocks and those Absolutely, cliffs, and yeah. that's where we like will focus a lot of our time is going. Glass and you spend lots of time glassing. Glassing and then just like your bird hunt bucks. Still hunting, like, just, just mm-hmm. kicking just, them, like kicking them up. Yeah, you know? like yeah. Getting them to stand up in these little tiny. Yeah, with a rifle, it's super effective. Holes. Just spend yeah. a day still hunting through some timber or some, some natural yeah. rocks. Yeah. yeah. So like when I look at a, yeah. I'll look at a ridge or something. If it's just like super broken and there's just like little benches and you know stuff like that, yeah. I'll focus on that. Do you sit down with a tripod and bust out some 15s or what's your go-to yeah. glass? When Usually, you yeah, glass? just just. Just glass and ten by forty twos uh, on a tripod. Yeah, yeah. So I don't just go, pick a part of hillside yeah, for the afternoon. Yeah, I don't go or full fifteen. Do you, do you just like like time frames like from you know sun up to ten? I'm just gonna still hunt and then maybe afternoon roll around you glass I'll, more or do you find yourself doing one or the other? I'll, like right at first light, I'm gonna sit down. Yeah. And I'm gonna look for deer moving. Trying to pick mm-hmm. a moving. Yeah, they're gonna move to their bedding area. Or they're feeding back up to their bedding area. So yeah. I'll sit down and I'll I'll just look. Yeah. Or like first light. Yeah. You know, I'm looking for deer movement, movement, movement shadows yeah. moving. Mm-hmm. I'm looking for stuff like that. And then you can kind of pinpoint where the deer are at. If that's not happening, uh, then I'll kind of go and still hunt through those bedding areas real slow. You maybe get up on a vantage where I can see them mm-hmm. and see into those areas. And then I'll, I'll sit back and I'll glass and see if I can get a buck, find a buck bedded. Um, but, you know, most of the times you're just kind of up still hunting through that stuff sure yeah it's always um, you know, been you're my not experience to... too with like whitetails is just yeah. it's it's not the rocky country it's the brushy stuff so you just still hunt through yeah. those that brush Super and slow. thickets and mm-hmm. it's like you said it's like bird hunting deer you're just kicking them up and you're just kicking them up man. you know hoping yeah. they stop and give you a shot yeah. opportunity you're hoping that they don't see you yep. when they're laying down yep you know you're hoping you startle them and they just kind of stand it's, up, exactly you know? yeah they're not looking at you first yeah you know because then it's over they're yeah just Bolt, yep. you know, you're hoping you just they just hear something they don't like mm-hmm. or catch a little bit of off movement and right. they just kind of stand up to check it out yeah. and they give you that two second yeah. window to that's to sometimes pop all you need yes. right. quick yeah. little jump shot yeah. that you need to take right. it's tough but it's it's an exciting way to hunt absolutely sure. yeah There's a lot of action that way because yep. sure. you never know what's going to happen exactly right? it's not like you're staring at a hillside and you're like well it's just nothing going on. Exactly. Yeah. And you're moving through brushy stuff or rocky stuff. Oh, it's like anything, anything can happen. Can and, that, and that's hunting in general, though. Yeah. Anything yeah. can happen anytime. time. Yeah. But, yeah, sometimes it's heartbreaking when you you, you hear some, you hear the thump when you're just hiking and you're huffing. Mm-hmm. Then you hear that heavy thump. Oh, yeah, you can see a deer and all you of a sudden you just heavy. see a frame. Yeah. And you're like, no. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. Uh, so, yeah, so that morning uh, found that heavy three-point. For, you know, air melted over his back. He, it's weird. He kicked up. He reared like he was hit. Yeah. So we, we, we spent we had that we spent a lot of time uh, looking for that deer. Yeah. You know, and, and finally, I had somebody with me helping, and he kind of left. And I said, "Well, I'm going to keep looking or whatever." Uh, kept looking around that that general knob where he was broken, sort of craggy knob, and I came around the left side of it, uh, taking a different route. And all of a sudden, uh, it's kind of kind of crazy. A cougar jumps out, like right in front of me, like twenty yards in front of me. Wow! And it's like hissing like a house cat. I mean, what? Like looking at me, hissing. Yeah, like like doing these crazy things. And yeah. I'm like, like what? And I don't have a I don't have a cougar tag in my pocket, right? Mm-hmm. If I had a cougar tag. Of course, that's what happens when right. you see exactly. one. You don't have a tag. Yeah, in like your how pocket. many years yeah. you go by that something like that never happens? Exactly. And every time I'm like, eh, forget the cougar tag. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it happens. So I'm looking at this cat, and I'm like, you know, like, what's going to happen now? Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, do I, just, do I just pace this thing? Like, what's... So I finally elect. I'm like, I'm just going to shoot right in front of it. You know, this is all happening within seconds. Right? Yeah. I'm like, I'm not going to let this thing, like, make up its mind on what it's going to do. So I shoot. I kick dirt and dust up in front of it, and it, and it takes off. So that had me going. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? I can so only I'm imagine. Shaking, oh, right? I, oh, yeah. And I'm like, what the? And I'm, and I'm thinking man, it's probably had kittens up there. You yeah, know, it had, yeah, could have been. You know, that's what I'm thinking. It was yeah. trying to like stand its ground and sort of get me out of there. But so as soon as that cat, I fire, and as soon as that cat kind of runs off around the knob, a nice four point jumps up from below me. Do you think this this cougar was stalking the four point? I don't think so. I think it would have. 
in my mind, what I'm thinking is it did have kittens. Some kind of kittens up there. Yeah, the small ones. Um, and it was trying to, like, you know, get It went into defense when it I saw think it would have, it would have, if it was a solo cat or mm-hmm. whatever, I think it would have, it would have probably just left. Right? Yeah. Like, not even. You would have never even known. Yeah. It would have, like, slipped it would away. Have, yeah. yeah. I think I was just getting closer and closer to this thing, and finally yeah. it was like, you know. I gotta do something. Yeah. Protect my like, young. it's gonna, like, puff up and. And uh, exactly, try to scare me away. Yeah, yeah. but as soon as it would have scared me away. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm out of here. So as soon as I did that, you know, a nice full point comes out from below me, and you know, I couldn't get a shot on that guy, and it was real nice to hear. But uh, but yeah, so that was that morning, uh, and that was kind of the end of our that first round. So that was like our first hunt, right? So general mm-hmm. season hunt. So that's kind of how it went. Uh, we ended up packing Rob's deer, you know, out. We, Got a hotel room. Nice, yeah. Got that deer on ice, and and uh, we did can't that. say I've never done that one before. Yeah, after a hunt. Yeah, yeah. we were kind of dirty. It's, not, and, it's kind of relifting when you just take a shower and relax yeah. a little bit, especially for you. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I get stinky, man. <laughs> oh, so do I. <laughs> yeah, so we go to the hotel, and it was it was good to sleep in a bed, and like it always is. And, Absolutely. Uh, we did a we elected to get that deer home, so um, we had like a little bit of a morning hunt in this one area that he knew of. And, didn't turn up anything but a bunch of white tail does really and uh so headed home and then that following weekend i think it was the last the last weekend of, of rifle that's when i headed over too with bobby yeah so we were out that is yeah the same yeah. the same time and my buddy scott i talked to him on the phone and i was like hey there's a spot that i used to hunt uh that i want to get back into you know i want to go see what's going on in there and it had burned a few probably Four years earlier, it burned up. So it was actually getting pretty good again. Yeah. And uh, so him and I jumped in the truck and we we headed out there again. And uh, we got up. It's quite a hike to get in there. Probably probably three miles. So this is another pack in type of hunt. Oh yeah, another pack in hunt. Yeah. Okay. So this isn't we weren't road hunting or base you know base camping it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were spike camping out. And we get up into that area and. It had snowed, so we were getting up on this ridge where we were going to camp out, and we're looking around, and we're seeing buck tracks, good, you know, big, mature-looking buck tracks. Mm. Okay, it's pretty good. Uh, So we, uh, it was like the afternoon, we got up in there, so we went ahead and set up camp. He brought his sawtooth up, his Kafaru sawtooth, which is stellar. Stellar tent. Oh, for the late season, I can't yeah. even imagine. I mean, you guys still, have the wood stove going yeah, and stuff. Yeah, in it. Oh yeah, and I can't say enough about those things. The sawtooth is a six person, or, or is that a oh, three? Oh no, it, that thing is like barely. I mean, it's two. Two is great. A three, would, you could do. So three. with gear and firewood yeah. and stove. I mean, two is perfect for a sawtooth. Okay. Really, yeah. Okay. So three, three, you could do three if you like. Maybe slept uh, in different like angles or whatever. Yeah. You sure. Probably do yeah. it. Uh, but two is great, you know, with the floor down and everything, and, and uh, sort of, you know, areas for gear. And yeah, and all yeah. That stuff. Was Scott hunting too? Did he have a rifle packing with him? Or? He did, but uh, we had, you know, as we were driving up, and and I had helped him uh, the year before with his with his bull. Sure. Right. Yeah. So we went in with his quality bull tag, and yeah. you know, I drove all yeah. the way out there. And, that might be another podcast there. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's it a great bull. It was a really cool hunt. So, uh, you know, I drove all the way down there and helped him with that. And, sure. You know, biggest, biggest bull. So now it's his turn to help you. Yeah. Out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's time so, to scratch the back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, come help me pack out a deer now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> pack out your elk. Come and help yeah. pack out this deer. I mean, it's only fair. It's only a quarter of the size. I know. <laughs> this one little bit bigger than normal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, for sure. So I think he, you know, he had already said he's like, I won't kill nothing until you kill something, which was cool. That's super you cool. Know? Yeah. He already shot a bull that year, and, uh, so he wasn't really hurt for me or yeah. anything, you know. So he was kind of passing that favor along for me just showing up to be a pack mule for him. Yeah. And, uh, so we get up there, we set up camp. Next morning, we head out, uh, looking around and. You know, we're finding some does, you know, nothing too, like, uh, you know, nothing too much, really. Yeah. And we're on this one ridge, and we look over, and he sees this deer, uh, this deer kind of move across the front of this rock face, 
right? He's like moving around. He's definitely moving to his bed. Okay. Uh, he's, there's probably some does up top there, and he's, he's moving away from those does, and he's going to go lay down. And he sees him. I don't see him. He's like, mm. he's right there. And I'm like, I don't know what you're looking at. Yeah. Goes, I'll believe you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Do you see a buck over there? He looks like a buck. Oh, we'll, we'll go over there and check him out. He actually called it. He's like, yeah, he's got this like really brownish green from here looking coat. Hmm. It was like a like an olive okay. colored coat on him, which is kind of cool. They got right? some pretty colors in that, in yeah. that general season. Yeah. yeah, I've never really seen that sort of olive color to to a mule deer. We we you know kind of hunt our way over there. When we come up with a plan, and you know he's coming left, I'm gonna go right. We start going up there. We're not seeing much. We sit down and we look across into the fire weeds on the other side. And then all of a sudden there's just does everywhere. Mm. Like, Holy moly. So we sat down with the spotter. We brought the spotter out that one. Uh, and glassed up all those deer. Make sure we looked at all of them. Uh, all we could find in terms of buck was a two-point running does around. Right, which is pretty typical. We saw lots of two-points yeah, in the late season. Pretty typical. You know, those bigger guys are off. Watch mm-hmm. exactly watch him, letting you know. the little guys get all this yeah frisky exactly so in this buck um, that he saw so when we finally give up on those deer like oh there's no there's no mature deer in there we're not gonna sit there and watch him anymore so we started to go back up after that that buck we kind of sidetracked and started watching those deer but so he goes left i go right and i'm going along this face and you're, you're rock climbing i mean you're like i mean to get up to these little benches and we get up there, and, and uh, I look, and I'm like, is that I mean, that's, that's a deer fur? And it's like that olive color. I'm like, holy, like, there's that deer. Mm-hmm. And I look, and you I'm like, it? no, he's like up looking at me. And I'm like, you know, frick, mm-hmm. like, there he is. Yeah, you're and busted, I, you're thinking you're and busted. And I did like the dumbest thing, right? I'm like, you know, I have my binos in the harness, and I have my rifle in my hand, I'm like, and I take my binos and I look, look at him. <laughs> instead of just putting my rifle up, yeah, right? Like yeah. scoping that deer. And I look at him and I'm like, oh, nice four point. Yeah. And he had, I think, like one little sticker oh, nice. coming off the front. And I was like, Is oh, that something cool. definitely you were looking for? Yeah, you mature, mature buck. Right? Yeah. Looking, that's general Washington. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Not going to be too picky. Exactly. Yeah, 140. Deer, you're shooting. Oh, oh yeah. Every day and, of the week, and with man. a little bit of character to him, too. <laughs> yeah. You ask some of our buddies, man, you see the yeah. first legal buck you're shooting. Right. <laughs> Me. So, <laughs> right. Me, too. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I, I'm like, oh, that's that buck. Hell yeah, saw, yeah. Right? He's just like looking at me. There's like this tree right here, and he's like just looking uh-huh. around the tree at me, and I'm like, all right. So, like, get the rifle up. As soon as I get the rifle up, he's like, eh. <laughs> I don't like you anymore. Yeah. You know? yeah. And he starts to kind of turn and walk and he like stops for a second and I'm like getting those crosshairs settle on him and I just, as soon as I shoot, he just, I don't know if he stepped down a little bit, but like again, right over his back. No way. Right? So it's like, like two mature bucks, like ones you'd be totally happy with. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. To be just airmailing them over their back. Yeah. So Little did you know, it was good. It worked out. For I you. know. Right? Yeah. It was meant to be. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Something was telling you like, no, this isn't I the one we call this somebody year. somebody else missing this year. <laughs> and then shooting a bigger buck like the next day. That's weird how stuff works out. Yeah, like that. I don't know what That's you're talking crazy. about. <laughs> Foreshadowing, yeah. maybe. This is coming up. You're, it's gonna get good. Yeah. So airmail over this buck's back, and you know Scott text me. He's like, "Was that you?" And I was like, "Yeah." Shot at that buck. He was like, you know, "Damn." Yeah. And I'm like, don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we back up. He's on the top of this thing, and we're trying to figure out where the heck each other are at. We finally meet up and I tell him they airballed it. He was kind of, I could see in his face, he was like, bummed out, yeah. You know, like it's a nice buck, big buck. Uh, mature buck. And so we're, we're like, yeah, we got to hike out of here and, and uh, get back to our, our camp so we get back to camp. But I'm down, you know. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, of course. Like, naturally. My uh, yeah. shin's yeah. dragging on the ground. Oh, yeah. I'm just you like, can't do anything about it. The season of like seeing upper caliber bucks in Washington and you're just... You're just screwing You can't up. make yeah. it happen, you yeah. Just can't. They're just, like, too close. Like, <laughs> like, it's, they're just too close. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it sucks because it's, like, you're, you know, you, typically you're always going to get those shots that are 100 yards, 150 yards, yeah. kind of, like, out there yeah. enough. To, but when they're, like, 60, 50, 
you know, it's too it's, easy. It's too easy, and it's just like <laughs> you end up just like put all oh, yeah, the right there, and it's like in that split second, you're like really you're oh yeah you're way over the back, yeah you know, yeah. You Especially if you're shooting angles or something like that. Angles, yeah. Feel. They're both. Yeah, well, that the second one, he was he was across, but he, he was moving down right when I shot. So I think it's just just that little bit extra. Just took some hair off his back or something. I mean, I didn't find any hair. But guessing. It yeah. happens. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't let, I think I hit him. I, I think I was, I was close. I was close. Yeah, it wasn't two feet over his back. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so we head back to camp, and I told him, you know, I was real down about it. And, you know, we kind of. Ate some, ate some food, went to bed, and, and uh, the next morning we get up, and and I go back out to the, my spot that I like to hunt, and I'm looking over, and all right, there's a buck for, right in the morning, right? Yeah. There's a nice three by four, not a real old deer, probably three year old deer, you know, he had some does with him. And so you were starting to see like maybe some pre rut going on. Yeah, definitely starting to see some rut now, like some more mature does than a two point running with, or more mature bucks than a, than a two point running with the does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking at him. I'm looking at him, and I range him, and he's 480 where he was standing. It's a poke. It's a poke. And I'm looking at him, and he's, he's. I mean, he's in, just inside of his ears. And he's a little tall, but he's three by four. And I'm like, eh. and he's he had that real mean looking face though. You know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah. Eyebrows. Oh yeah. They're yeah. bad. Oh yeah. You know, I thought that was pretty cool. So yeah. Like, that's a, cool a little more color. white to his face mm-hmm. and his nose and stuff. Yeah. A little more yeah, mature Real black eyebrows, yeah. real dark eyebrows. So uh brow. So I watch him moving his does around and he's checking them all and and you know the does are kind of moving right to left over this face and they're kind of whipping around this this ridge this knob and i'm just sitting there watching him watching him which is super fun yeah. oh absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. And i'm like you in no to hurry to shoot this buck doing some like pre yeah. at some action that's yeah. fun to watch man oh, yeah. absolutely right. yeah for sure and i'm not i'm i'm in no hurry to shoot this buck yeah. right and i'm like i know it's like second to last day though and yeah I'm like, you know mm-hmm. like it's getting out of the wire. Yeah, and then with no a couple meat, misses no under your belt, freezer. you're like, you know, yeah. your confidence is kind of rattled a little mm-hmm. bit. You're like, I'm, I gotta, I can't mess this one up. I gotta, right. So you're taking your time. I, exactly. I get it. So I'm watching this buck, and he finally kind of gets over on this other tree line, and I'm like, mm, I think I'm gonna shoot you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like I think <laughs> you I've watched decided. Long yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think I'm you're like a three year old deer. It's just you know, so like I said, Washington State. I'm not making excuses or anything. But. Mm-hmm. but uh, but um, yeah, so I decide I'm going to try to take this deer. So you know, I was fortunate. There's like a like a rock, a big rock like this, and then another rock just mm-hmm. next to it. So I could basically sit at a bench, right? So I'm like sitting on a rock with my rifle on this bench. Oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah, and I've got like, a bipod and stuff. Yeah, I've got a bipod. On. I'm just like trained on this buck, you know. And, I'm just kind of waiting for him to give me that perfect And shot. where are you at yardage-wise now? He was at 200 now. So you, you close him to 200? Oh, yeah, he came about 280, coming around the face of this thing. And, and he's still pushing, or not yeah, pushing, Yeah, he, he would go over the top and come back. He, he's just checking him, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but I waited for him to, like, kind of calm down a little bit. Now he was just kind of like, he'd stand there for a second, and he's moving. Um, so then I got set up for the shot. It's, you know, still early morning, but right when I... Right when I went to shoot or get ready to shoot, the sun peeked up over the ridge and just scoped me. Mm. Oh, like, no. I couldn't see anything. Like I could see the silhouette of the deer, and I was just like, "Well, there's that." And is right. he mingled in with does too? So you couldn't no, be, like no, he just... was he was right there. But like I could see him in the binos a little, you know. But when I put the, the scope on, on it. he was just gone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just, just washed nothing. right out. Yeah, it just washed out. Yeah. I was like, "Well, that's that." So, but I didn't. I mean, I could watch him, and I and I watched where they went. I watched them go over the ridge again, and I knew they were kind of like in this little depression on the top. And I was like, "Well, mental note: tomorrow morning's the last day. I'm not going to go in there chasing this deer. You know, I don't know where all the does are. I don't know. I don't know what's going on the other side of that hill. I'm just going to leave them." Mm. So I went down, crossed the, the hill, and we went over. And I met up with Scott. And you weren't seeing any other people up there. No. After that, uh, I went down and uh, I linked up with Scott and kind of told him what happened up there and said, hey, tomorrow morning, you know, if you don't see anything today, that's his game plan. Mm-hmm. Head out and go to that, that area of 
hopefully those does and you know those deer are just feeding around up top there and they're just going to be on that same loop pattern yeah they're going to come loop back around and hopefully i'll catch them right at the same time tomorrow so if we go we, we work this other area we're not seeing much uh deer and we kind of where we spotted all those does in that two point running uh, deer around the day before, we said, okay, so we're looking at these big draws that go up there and we're like, okay, we're gonna go up in these higher basins and see if we can't see, if, you know, we can't find anything more mature up there. So we groups of deer up there. So uh, we make our way up there, it's a long ways. We get up there and uh, we're working two sides of this little drainage and uh, Scott's on one side, I'm on the other, and there's like this little, it's like a wash kind of in the middle, and there's fireweed and stuff. It's like mm -hmm. perfect deer habitat. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's just like primo, what you want. And I'm walking, and all of a sudden, boom, up jumps this buck. I put my rifle up, and I'm looking at him, and it's like a two point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe a small three. And I put my rifle down, and he's got his rifle on it. I'm like, don't shoot it. Yeah. Don't yeah. shoot it. <laughs> I don't think it's legal. Uh, but so that buck kind of. He didn't, he, I think he heard me a little bit, but he didn't see me. Mm. So he like kind of ran up on this like little rock bench and then started running back towards me and then finally saw me and mm. like, skirted back up. And Typical young, there. stupid. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Young, two, you know, two and a half, three yeah. year old deer probably. Yeah, smaller side. But, um, so we kept working up that drainage and we get to the top, this top ridge and it's, it's way up there and we could see this other ridge over here and we're like oh we'll go over there and we'll set the spotter up and we'll see if we can't see anything over there so we go over there and we sit down and all of a sudden boom there's some deer and it's two point bigger two point this time and bigger one but he's running does up the mountain oh really just pushing them really and they're running i mean they don't want anything to do with it <laughs> and he's just they're just hauling but i thought they saw us for a second and i was like no we're really far away I mean, yeah. we're like 600 yards away from these deer there's no way they saw us really we're mm. sitting down so they get a little two point, just all riled up and push these yeah, deer up. Yeah, he just pushed or? them, and they want nothing to do. Them. They kept running away from them, and they're running yeah. up over the hill. And I was like, okay, so we saw it's that. Funny watching those little two points pushing those. Yeah, right. right. Cause they're not ready. Yeah. And so we're like, oh, okay, great. So we we hunt back towards where we're camped, and you know it's like primo deer area. I mean, it's just like what you would want. Mm -hmm. Just nothing up there. And this spot's weird. It's I mean, there's. There's a lot of deer there, but they're not like giant groups, you know, like small, yeah, small groups around, like four, four does, mm -hmm. just little pockets just of little them pockets here and there. Deer. Yeah, so we kind of hunt back around and come down, and uh, that's kind of it for that for that evening hunt. We cut some really nice bear track. I mean, really the biggest black bear track I ever seen. Did you have a tag in your pocket this time? Yeah. Good. Good. <laughs> we were hoping we saw did you, ever, did you ever put eyes on a bear out there? At uh, all during no. deer season? Mm -mm. No. No. No, we didn't. And uh, so we get back to camp and we're like, all right, that's three by four. That's the game plan for tomorrow. So yeah. We, uh, we went to bed, we got up, made some coffee. And then. Uh, so this is your final day. This final is, day. This is I mean, Tuesday we, morning. Yep, yeah, Tuesday morning. And, we had already decided that we were going to hunt till 11. Okay. And then we were going to go home. Mm -hmm. That was it. End of, end of season. So we get up in the morning, and I'm still down, kind of what happened. And yeah. Yeah. Just, just not feeling good about it. So we get out there and I get out there and get to my area, my knob, and I'm not, I'm not seeing anything. And Scott, he hung back, and he finally gets up to me and, we're kind of, I, I didn't, I, I didn't yet glass over to where I saw the buck before. I was, okay. I was glassing where they went mm -hmm. when I last saw them. How far from your tent is your, is your glassing spot? What's your safe zone? You, you camp a mile away from your hunt and you camp two miles away. What, what's your, we're are you, are you camping right on your glassing spot? We're deer hunting. We'll camp pretty close. Uh, to the area that you're hunting yeah. in? Yeah. We, we were probably... From the area that I like to look from, we were probably uh, 200 yards. And are you tucked? You're, you're oh, tucked we were in the like tucked and... in 
on the side of this hill, underneath yeah. a tree. Oh, like okay. Only, only flat spot underneath a tree. Gotcha. You know, and there's still deer running all over. Oh, absolutely. But you're kind of trying to really. tuck yourself away from the, yeah. the hillsides that you're seeing deer on. Well, we don't know campfires. I mean, we're not standing around poking a campfire. Yeah. Mm. Then, you know, we had the stove, but that's about it. Yeah. Uh, so real small footprint. We're, yeah. We're Super not, minimalistic. Not, not at that yeah. Point. You know, we're yeah. not trying to like you know sit up there and. You know, smashing beer cans on our head. Yeah, hooting and hollering. It's not a yeah. frat party. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we get up there, we eat some food, and we go to bed. But, yeah. Um, so I make my way out there, and I'm looking. Scott finally shows up after a while. Does he see anything? I'm like, no. Nah. And he's like, well, I'm gonna go this way. You can go that way. And uh, so you pick something up. And I was like, no. Nah, like, I think I'll go this way because like an easier way to go. Mm-hmm. He's like, no. I think you should go that way. And I looked at him and I'm like, you know what? You're right. <laughs> you're right I, I I should go this way so I went that way and because I thought those deer were gone mm. I was like there's no way you'd see them you know and so I went back around and I looked and it's right in the exact same spot that 3 by 4 was standing the day before there's another buck really and he's got all the does now or his does okay and I'm looking at this buck and I'm like holy smokes like this I is can, not the same buck. This is not the same buck. Like mm-hmm. he is huge. Yeah. Like I could just see frame. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So he turned his head a little bit, and it was just big frame. And I was like, "Here we go." Yeah. So overnight, he must have rolled into that yeah. country. Yeah. 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 That three by four was nowhere to be found. Yeah. So Those you think he's a migratory chocolate horns? They don't. Or? Yeah. Yeah. I think. Yeah. They're definitely migratory deer. Uh, definitely migratory. And I, I do remember that, that um, the Saturday before the Tuesday you're on, so the mm. Saturday before the closing of the season, they got hammered yeah. with snow. Yep. Yep. Absolutely got hammered. So it, it definitely had enough snow, in my opinion, to start getting these deer to think about yeah. you know, starting to Getting starting out to of the high country. Yeah. Yeah. Well, weather, weather for sure is going to push them out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? So weather for sure is going to push them out. Whether he came down because of snow or he was around. Just ready. Waiting. Yeah. And there was a hot dough in that group. And he came down the night before to check those does, mm-hmm. and there was a hot one, so now he's there with her. Yeah, yeah. Right? absolutely, yeah. So he was kind of maybe there, but In the wasn't. general vicinity. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. up in the rocks, and he's just waiting. Yeah. yeah. And he's just going to sit there, and he's going to wait. He's going to check those does at night, and he find a hot doe, and he's going to hang with that doe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, that's his until, until he breeds her. Yeah. She's done. Uh, so anyways, back to that buck. So I'm looking, and I'm like, holy smoke. And I knew it was, it was very fortunate. Uh, well, I mean, I could have ranged him again, but yeah. he was standing in the same exact spot, so I knew how far away he was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? I'm like, that, that buck is at 480. Yeah, like on the dot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, same kind of area. There's like a rock and then another rock. So, like, sitting a bipod on it. Yeah. And uh, he's just standing there, and he could. I don't think he could see me well but he knew something was over something there. was over because he's looking my way mm-hmm. yeah he's he broads up he's like looking in my direction okay yeah. up to where i'm and at. bucks that caliber they don't get to that caliber if they're being silly so they also could have been that doe was keeping him there do you think so if, oh if yeah he, knew he, you were he there, didn't want to leave but he didn't want to leave the doe but no. he knew you were there no. and he's like what do i you those, know those does they weren't like the day before they were kind of like spread out along that hillside okay. they were mm-hmm. a little condensed in there and they weren't spookiness they weren't like like together yeah huddled up together they were just kind of with each other so he wasn't like he didn't want to leave those though mm. what I could but this all happened in a split second yeah from when i saw him when i shot him yeah uh, so was able to you know know exactly how far he was and he's just standing there and uh you know compensated for how high up i was in the drop one shot and down he went and we went up there and it was kind of crazy. Scott was making his way kind of underneath me, and I actually shot. I'm, I'm like 50 yards above him up the hill, and I didn't mm-hmm. know he was down there. But I shot over the top. Did of he him. see the buck at this point, or he, had no clue? No, he had no clue. He jumped out of his boots because my 300 wind mag went off like right, <laughs> right up there, and he's like, "Holy smokes! What is he shooting at?" Yeah, yeah. yeah, and I finally make my way around and come down and meet him, and he's like, "What? what you know, what's up?" And I yeah. was like, "I was like, dude." Like, we need to get over there. Yeah. <laughs> we need to go there before he shrinks yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's going to shrink on us. So, uh, you know, we're going over there, and I'm like, I go, you know, I, he drops, right? But it, uh, he kind of got up for a second, and there's like another little 
kind of just a little hill. Okay. Right? Just a little tiny hill. And I went over to where he was. I'm like, looking for blood. I'm looking for blood. I'm like, where? He dropped right here. And like, I mean, he hammered him. Yeah. Mm. Boom. Yeah. Down. But he must have got one last burst. Burst yeah. of energy because he yeah. went up over that knob. And I'm standing and around like, right trying there. to find where blood, you know, I don't, I don't want to go running after him. Just yeah, no. He's a big buck. Yeah, you know? good but call. Scott goes and walks up onto that knob and I can see him put his rifle up, puts his rifle up, takes his rifle down and he's just like kind of tells me to come here. Yeah, yeah. waves me up there. And he's like, right, you know, right there. I get to see one side stuck oh, yeah. out of the grass and I was yeah. like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. I want to see the other side. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know? And we, uh, we get up there and that was the biggest mule deer body wise I've ever seen. Really? I mean, Old buck, just giant Roman nose. I mean, just like a Brahma bull. Mm. Wow. Just like, Did the wow. taxi age him for you for the no, tooth? Or no. no. Yeah, no. Did he have a guess? I'm guessing that deer is six and a half years old. Yeah, yeah that's a sure. mature yeah. mule. Very mature, yeah. especially in Washington. Oh yeah. yeah, very mature, very mature buck. It yeah. makes you wonder where these things are hiding for six and a half years. You know. Yeah. And yeah, how, for how sure. they elude these, you know, Washington mobs think, and. Yeah. Well, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of those deer, you know, you see, you see some big ones killed, but then you go down on the winter range and stuff, and you see them oh, yeah. down there. Oh, you yeah. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? But I think a lot of them stay up high for a long time. Yeah. And then, you know, then they'll come down. And, They're just stubborn. Yeah. Exactly. We, yeah. we came across some stubborn two points, man, that you shouldn't have seen. And you're like, what are you doing up here? Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. during his late season. Snow to get out. We've oh, seen yeah. does yeah. in knee deep snow, you know, at 6,000 feet when yeah. there's four point bucks down in the range already. And you're like, what is what is she doing? Yeah. yeah. So I think a lot of times those upper age class deer, they're, you know, they yeah. just they just know. They're yeah. like, I'm or still they, fine. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, or they'll they won't go down to those traditional winter areas. They'll mm-hmm. like stay in some like in between zones. Yep. They'll yeah, find a little they'll pocket. Find a little pocket mm-hmm. that didn't get, you know, eighteen yeah. inches. It got yeah. eight or yeah. something. They'll that, hang out up there. Yeah. They'll still breed does up high. Just, oh yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. And, and that's kinda of what we were thinking when we when we saw those does up there. It's mm-hmm. kinda of like, okay, then if there's does up here, there's gotta be a stubborn buck that's he's got, you know, one or two instead of hitting the range and hitting six yeah. or seven. Yeah. So they're up there just kind of testing those things. Yeah, and they you know, they travel too. Oh, yeah, yeah. travel far, but uh, but back to the buck. So you know, we walk up on this deer, and I'm I'm just in awe, like how big this thing is, right? So oh like, yeah, I mean his chest was, I mean he was the size of a spike elk. I mean he was just like he looked. Scott looks at me and he goes, "You got to kill the biggest buck on the mountain on the last." <laughs> and I was like, "Well, dude, sorry, dude. Yeah, you got to yeah. kill the biggest bull on that mountain on the first day." <laughs> I wasn't even like broken in yet, no, man. I had a bad back. I couldn't walk for three days after your pack out. So let's just not talk about this. Yeah, one. no kidding. Um, but yeah, just a great buck. You know, my biggest buck to date. Dark black horns. Oh yeah, they're I mean, super just cool. Such black. a pretty buck. Yeah. yeah. So he got in a burn and was rubbing in a burn. And, yeah. You know, he darkened those horns up. And, and uh, just, just huge, thick neck on him. I mean, just, I mean, just. A giant specimen of a buck. Mm. Yeah, just one you would always want your option. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Um, just a mainframe four, right? Just heavy, keeps its mass all the way through. Yep. Nice eye guards, three inch eye guards. Uh, just a nice buck. Um, stunk to high hell. He was rutting. Really? Oh yeah, he was stinky. This was October. Closed. Oh, um, 24th. Yeah. 20, yeah, 24th. 24th. Whatever the last day was. Yeah, the Tuesday, last mm-hmm. day. And uh, just a nice buck. So, you know, we took some shots, not too many, and uh, got him worked up and started hiking him out. And I, our packs were pretty heavy. That was a big deer. Oh, I bet, man. Kept, uh, Did you guys go get camp and then? No. So we didn't have, I mean, there was, that deer we estimated is 300 pounds. Just cute. Toad, man. I mean, yeah, just yeah. the size of an elk. Like, yeah. yep. I had my hand on this thing, and I'm just like, I mean, it's just, it's just huge, yeah. right? So, and you got him right before like he was starting to look. Yeah, so we had and like and I have a picture, and maybe I, I sent it to you or something. There's a picture with me, and it's three over three inches of fat. I was just like, I was telling him on the way up here, like, just my butt, no fat, none. at all. Yeah, none. it's just crazy. Just, we were like carving that fat off, and I mean, it's like this. Yeah. yeah. So he was like just thinking about retin. 
getting stinky, getting yeah. ready to go, but he hadn't done it yet. Yeah. So he was like fully healthy, yep. I, not He stringy. just had to look like a beef cow up there. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. he was just huge. <laughs> like, he was just fat and just like, just giant. Yeah. Yeah. He made his rack look small. He was like, oh yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I mean, in the picture, it still doesn't look small, but like, yeah. the size of his head, I mean, he made that rack look a lot smaller than it was. And uh, so we're getting worked up and I took, you know, a lot of meat. We left the we left the hindquarters bone in to keep that keep everything upright. You know, mm. keep okay, most yeah. Of that, most of that weight going up and yeah. balled out. Yep. In the bottom of your pack. Bottom of your pack for mm-hmm. a everything pack else out. got boned out, but those those rears stayed on bone. And you know, I took out a giant load of meat, head, horns, cape, all in one shot. You know, well over 100 pounds. Yeah. And uh, Scott took a bunch of meat. There was no way we could take camp, mm-hmm. so. We hiked that buck out five miles down to the truck. So and I turn around and go back in. And go back. In. We, we went to camp, we went to the town first. Yeah. We got a burger. We got yeah. a we don't, I don't think we got a burger. burger. I think we got some gummy bears. <laughs> and, uh, I love it, man. I love guys in the, yeah. in the food. Like yeah. they just crave. I yeah. love yeah. it. We need some sugar for sure. Uh, <laughs> so we got it all you know on ice that was the mm-hmm. biggest thing on ice yeah that pack out man when i hit that dirt road at the very bottom there's this you know the shaky knees going yeah we could get down to this old farmer road and, uh, and uh i just remember getting that pack off and i had forgotten my trekking poles so it was like uh, hiking out with no poles yeah, yeah. So, like trying to keep myself that's at that point things, i grabbed sticks man. oh those yeah. trekking just, poles there's no sticks, sticks oh, because that whole area weight had and been gold. burned Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. Like a few years ago. You think you don't need those trekking poles until you're packing yeah. heavy weight. And then yeah. you're like, a f- couple of years ago on Jeff's elk hunt, he didn't have trekking poles and I did. Yeah. And packing out, I'm like singing songs yeah. fine. And oh, yeah, he's dude. just yeah. screaming. You don't realize you know? like, oh. you know, looking at him, you're like, yeah, I, I, I got good balance, you know? Yeah. And then that shit goes out the window when you got 80 to 100 pounds on you and yeah, you're trying yeah. to do like the over the you know the deadfall mm-hmm. and it, it you know it's nice to have you know for guys that haven't tried them yet the trekking poles to keep you upright to keep you that you know the extra leg on the ground it's yeah. it's super nice when, to have when you're going downhill it really takes a lot of the shock out of your knees too when yeah, you're able to put like. weight into your arms oh, and yeah. into your upper well, body well you become instead of two wheel drive now you're four wheel drive yeah, yeah exactly so now you can like stick that Nope. You know, or the, the old nice somewhere. break when you just yeah. come that's, on there. That's what I really wanted yep. for, man. Yep. You know, oh, so yeah. you get to the point where we're, we're coming out that bottom and, you know, we're doing the whole, like, 15 steps. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And, like, oh, you yeah. don't have anything to rest, so you're just kind of standing there. Yep. You know, you're trying to stay upright. And yeah. You got a lot of weight in that pack, but... I just remember getting down there to that road and getting that pack off and just laying on that like cold dirt. <laughs> and just like, this is the best place. Yeah. <laughs> just laying in the dirt. Give me a milk. This yeah. is more comfortable than any bed. Yeah. Like. <laughs> and it was like, you know, not a cloud in the sky that day. You know, it's hot. You know, it's not hot. It's like 60 sun, or something. You know, yeah. it's just like, you know, so. But well, we got him on ice, then we went back up in there. Going back up to get camp, that was a breeze. Yeah. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Yeah, we just whew, right back just, up just there. Just happy at that yeah. point, too. Yeah. It's just yeah. Like, ah. yeah. Went right back up there, got camp, and, and got him out of there. That's yeah. awesome, man. What a buck. No kidding. What a hunt. What, what? a testament to just yeah. persistence, man. Yeah. Yeah. If anyone hasn't day. seen that buck. Oh, we'll put it on the video. We'll put it on the video. Make sure you go check it out because yeah. it is well worth yeah. looking at. Oh, it's absolutely. a good buck. It's yeah. a really good it's buck. A, it's a really good buck. It's an in. amazing buck, man. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's one of those things like last day, last morning, like you don't expect to to connect on a buck like that. Oh, okay, yeah. You do. You know? yeah. Some, some guys do. It's, but, it, uh, these are the stories that people yeah. remember but, you know, yeah. for years to come. Like, oh, man, like, it can happen on the well, last it's day. Gonna, oh, it it's going to have someone It's gonna have someone thinking about it on their hunt. Like, oh, man, I know this guy. I listened to this story. Yeah. It can mm-hmm. happen. Absolutely. The last, the last day, three you know? years, my last, so let's say the last three bucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, the last three seasons, I booked all, all my bucks in the last day. Really? Wow. Yeah, last four. No, last four bucks. Really? Last yeah, last day of my life. Wow. You hold out a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just saying, it's just a testament right. to persistence. You know, some guys, maybe they would have called it on Sunday. Yeah. Maybe they would have called it like, eh, I'm going to go home and get an extra night in bed. Especially after a miss or two oh, as yeah. well. Like the mental side of it is just, like you're saying, yeah. you were down, you were down. A lot of guys would be down and out at yeah. that oh, point. Yeah. They're you like, know, so. they're basically driving home in their mind. 
Exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And then they, yep. they talk about it like, uh, oh, you know, maybe maybe an extra night with the missus, or I'll, I'll get a, you know some grub before I go back to work. Yeah. You know, you, you kind of talk yourself out of it. Yep. You, you get to a low point, and, and it's oh, it's the easy way out. You know, it I'm is. just going to go home and get an extra night in, in bed, but yep. for, for you to stick it out and come home with a buck like that. Yeah. Is, yeah, it's really cool because I had limited time too. Like mm-hmm. this season, like yeah. a lot of seasons, like up until this year, uh, I've always had a lot of time. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. So like I could I could spend many nights in the woods. And this year it was like, all right, I got like two and a half days here, and yeah. like three days here, piecing like, together. Your that's it. Yeah, yep. yeah, and like and, and not being able to really elk hunt this year, and you know we did a bear hunt. Yeah, you know air air mail the bear. <laughs> <laughs> you had the air mail year going on. Yeah, it was yeah. That bear is a tough one. Though. That's another podcast. Yeah. <laughs> took him into my bear spot. And all my <laughs> he took me into his bear spot and I took a bear out of it. So, yeah. I mean, it doesn't get much better for me. Could have been two bears. Yeah, it could have been. Yeah. yeah. Could have been two. But, uh, but, yeah, so with a year with real limited time to hunt, mm-hmm. uh, to be able to walk away at the end with a buck like that. Oh, yeah. You know, a lot of guys put in quality hunts. You know, they'll oh, yeah. have 14 years oh, for yeah. a quality to hunt. To get a chance at a buck like that. Buck like Absolutely, that. man. For I mean, over the counter. Any western state, that buck is a shooter in any state yeah. across oh, the board. Oh, yeah, for sure. I in mean, anyone's size, man. Yeah, and like, so for, for it to come out of Washington, I think a lot of people's jaw dropped. You know, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. no one thinks about monster mule deer when they think yeah. about Washington. No, that's like, I mean. And there's none. Yeah, yeah there, there aren't any, so don't bother trying. But. <laughs> These yeah. guys didn't take. We're talking about Washington, D.C. here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's this tiny town in British Columbia yeah. called Washington. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look it up. Hunt yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, just fortunate. Good Absolutely, man. Yeah. Great hunt. But you killed a good buck, too. I did. So that about wraps things up, guys. Um, we're going to do a giveaway here. Let uh, Tony talk about the coffee. What are we giving away today? Yep. So we're giving away our scent packs, which is our single serve backcountry coffee. So you just take those, throw them in your pack. Your coffee's set for at least 12 days. So you just fire up the jet boil, throw some water in. Fire up the jet boil, throw them in, brew them, you know, three minutes, right around there, three, four minutes. And uh, you can take them out. We, we leave them in. You know, mm-hmm. drink with extra, it. Yeah. Yeah. extracting that coffee like a French sure. press. Uh, they're great. I mean, it, it's just super easy. You don't have to bring in uh, like a backpack pour over. Okay. Or any, you only have to bring in a cup, right? So if you're if you're if you're boiling mm-hmm. coffee in an MSR or or a jet boil, uh, you can just throw them right in there, and you don't have to bring in the extra clutter. Yeah. Cool, man. That's look awesome. out for later this year. Um, we've got a couple more backcountry parks coming out. So yeah, we're pretty excited about those. Those should launch here in the next couple months. So keep your ear to the rail on those. What's awesome. your brand and where can uh, Dark people Timber find Coffee? It? Uh, you can find us online at darktimbercoffee.com. You can find us on Instagram at Dark Timber. Uh, you can t- find us on Facebook at Dark Timber Coffee. So. Sweet. I know, Je- I know Jeff uses that stuff. I'm not so much a coffee yeah. guy, but yeah. he loves I, it. So yeah. Yeah. it's good. You know, it's a game changer, man. It is. Yeah. And then you can support someone like you instead of like the, you know the big corporate companies, yeah. Starbucks, right? Or exactly. Or somebody that's just playing the part. Exactly. Yeah. And um, explain the donation at the end of the year. Yeah. Purchase. So we so we donate a portion of our sales to conservation, which is a super cool idea. Yeah. yeah. That's super awesome. awesome. Yeah. And you so can we pick were, and choose what you, you want to do. You can pick and choose. So um, instead of us just saying like. You know, uh, at the end of the year or whatever, we were going to do it quarterly, but it's making more sense for us to do it annually. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, you can choose. So instead of us saying like at the end of the year, like all this money goes to this person, so we're leaving it up to the customer to to uh, choose where that money goes, where where they want. Cool. Their mm-hmm. little portion of that to go. Awesome. That's awesome. That's super cool. Yeah, we just did a promotion with uh, partnered up with the TRCP. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, we did a, what's called the Roosevelt Roast with yeah, them. Yeah, saw that. Uh, we generated a lot of money for conservation. That's so super cool, man. Pretty excited about that. It was a huge success. Um, they're going to do some great things with those funds. Cool. So, and if you're not a backcountry hunter or something like that, you can get just regular coffee. Yeah, you, can, like that, right? you can get yeah regular coffee, either whole bean, or if you need a ground on our drop-down menus, you can choose from pour-over, espresso, French press, uh, percolator stuff like that. And if you got something weird like a siphon pot or whatever, just shoot me an email, shoot us an email, and, and we can get a ground for you. Whatever, Sweet, whatever man. you got, so we can dial it into whatever you, whatever you need. Super cool. That's service right there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then also on the other end of the table, we're gonna be giving away a first light ball cap over here, and then our new 2018 PN Wild State shirt. We're gonna be uh, giving that away. And how to enter into the giveaway is gonna be just uh, follow us on Instagram. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube and comment on this video done and that's it we'll be doing the drawing 
Um, haven't really decided when the drawing's going to be, but we'll let you know. And uh, thanks, guys. If you like this, it's something we're going to uh, continue to do throughout the season of 2018. We're going to have guests on like Tony, probably have him on again. Uh, super cool guests all the time, just trying to keep something different, talk about hunts. Maybe we're just not going to have guests. Maybe it's going to be me and Zach or something. Yep. Just talking hunting, what we're doing to prepare, just... It's gonna be it's gonna be cool. So like to have you guys on for along the ride, and uh, we appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.